Hi, Peter Charles here for Fly Fly Fishing. And let's talk about a concept today which I call coherent system. You can come up with other names for it, the name doesn't really matter. But the idea is that the fly line, the leader, and the fly are all on the same page. You don't have one element working against another element. For example, a high drag fly with a very long leader. Those situations can cause you all sorts of problems. Now, yes, I do have a video explaining how to cast a, a heavy fly in a light line. It can be done, but it's not fun, and you don't spend your whole day doing that if you don't have to. The important thing is when we get to the water and we start selecting flies, selecting the line we're going to use, selecting sink tips, everything like that, you should be thinking about all these elements working together, and rather than have them work against each other. Uh, so, for example, if I'm using a fly like my headstander pattern, which is big rabbit wing, lead eyes, heavy jig hook, you know, very high drag body, hackle, that does not want to come out of the water easily on a spay cast. I mean, once you plop the anchor on that thing, it's going to the bottom, it doesn't want to come out. So if you were to use a long leader and a long skinny uh, tipped uh, spay line, it's not moving. <laughs> you make a cast, that thing will stick in the water and the front end of your fly line would just flop in front of you. So you, you would want to be using a Skagit head for that setup. So you can uh, get that fly out of the water easily. Now a lot of people think it's about turnover. Yeah, and turnover can be an issue. But think about it, that big headstander fly of mine, I can cast on a 9 foot 5 weight trout rod. So just I just need a bass bug line and away I'll go. So overhead casting big flies is often a lot easier than spay casting big flies because we have to not only turn the fly over, we have to get it out of the water. And I don't think people think about that component often enough. So we end up with two scenarios. One where the flies a struggle to get out of the water and it kills the momentum of a forward cast, even if we can get it out. Then it doesn't want to turn over because we've lost so much momentum, and the fly's large and heavy to begin with. The opposite one we don't hear of very often, but it's just as big a problem, only from a different perspective. And that is to use heavy lines like a Skagit head with a heavy sink tip, uh, a short, thick leader, and you tie a little fly to it. Why? I mean, you've got a little fly that comes out of the water easily. When you go to a Skagit head with that short, thick leader, you're killing the action of the fly. If you've got a small fly, you need that thing to move in the water to be kicked around by the current. For that, you need a long, skinny leader. And once you've gone to a long, skinny leader, why are you using a Skagit setup? It's not necessary. So when we go out in the water, I think a lot of people just take their fly box, pull a fly out, stick it on the end of their line, and go fishing. And they don't give enough thought to making sure the leader, the fly, and the fly line are all designed to do the same job. S you know, long skinny leader, small fly, long finely tapered fly line, or a heavy high drag fly, short thick leader, big chunky steel uh, Skagit head. Those are the types of thinking we want to do. So when you start mixing and matching, that's when problems start, and the quality of your fishing and the effectiveness of your fishing starts to go downhill. So keep that concept in mind, a coherent system, to make sure your fly your leader and your fly line are all on the same page. Cheers.